Lasers were first invented in 1960. About 10 years later, a professor at the Institute of Optics uh, at the University of Rochester, Moshe Lubin, realized this is technology University of Rochester should get into. It built in its long history of the Institute of Optics, which started in 1929. The LLE was born in 1970. Our culture of innovation started from the beginning. We've always been a vertically integrated organization that brings the scientists together with the engineers to advance science for mankind. The other key thing is education. We are a university. The old adage that if you really want to understand a subject, you really have to teach it is true. So the fact that we teach students, that we have these young brains coming in, challenging our understanding on a daily basis, just has continued to make our advances astounding. Chirp pulse amplification, which was recognized by the 2018 Nobel Prize, was developed here by a graduate student, Donna Strickland and her advisor. Amazing, um, something that inspires students even today. Education is really at the core of discovery, and the LLE provides that um, foundation to students and to the scientists around us. Students should study at the laboratory for laser energetics because there's no shortage of encouraging, brilliant individuals who want to support and develop students as scientists. Students should work at the laboratory for laser energetics because there's nowhere else where you can get a national lab environment on a college campus. These are the largest lasers on any academic setting, and so the ability to, as a grad student, perform these types of experiments is truly unique. Having a large facility like this seated at a university really opens it up to a broader community of scientists to be able to do work on the facility. So if you're an astrophysicist who gets awarded time on one of our facilities and you need to use a diagnostic technique that you're not familiar with, you don't need to go out and learn that whole diagnostic technique. You can contact us here at the Laboratory for Laser Energetics and we can connect you with a scientist or a scientific team that are familiar with those diagnostic techniques that can then bring them to bear on your science. Every year I get to work with astrophysicists doing astrophysics. I get to work on inertial confinement fusion. I get to help grad students discover new materials. And the breadth of the science that we're doing here that I get to feel like I'm a part of is one of the most amazing parts of working here at LLE. The fourth generation laser for broadband experiments, the Flux laser, is a real novel laser system that the Laboratory for Laser Energetics has invented. We believe it's the next generation system that will allow us to mitigate laser plasma instabilities and drive targets much more effectively. It's a single beam to start out that we're introducing to the Omega laser plasma instability platform in order to understand and demonstrate to the community that we can mitigate these laser plasma instabilities that are expected through the new flux system. We're dealing with advanced technology pretty much in all aspects of what we're doing, particularly with the flux laser system. We're really taking existing concepts and using them in new and novel ways. And the, the broad spectrum of the types of people that I get to interact with, the laser scientists, the engineers that are on my team, every day we're, we're coming in um, and figuring out how to take these advanced technologies and really bring them uh, to real life. As so we continue to bring Flux to Omega, that will allow us to build a platform with which to grow into the design of the next Omega laser system. OPAL stands for Optical Parametric Amplifier Line, and it's a technology we've been working on, I'd say probably since 2008, using a nonlinear optics to produce very broadband laser pulses. We actually have a proposal into the NSF right now to design and prototype that equipment and then go on to do a full implementation of a 2x25 petawatt laser, which would be the highest power lasers in the world. Omega Next, which is our working name for the next facility that we envisioned here at the, the Laboratory for Laser Energetics, does several things. One thing is it'll be larger than the existing Omega system. Uh, the second thing is it will implement broadband laser technology to mitigate or even suppress laser plasma instabilities. My hopes for Omega Next are to increase shot rate, get more scientific productivity, more happy customers, and really uncover more basic science, uh, both for fusion energy, but the other types of things that Omega 
currently is used for, which is discovery science. One of the most rewarding parts about being the Omega EP laser facility manager is I get to feel like I'm a collaborator on a hundred different experiments every year. The thing that I hope for more than anything else is just more of the same, to be a part of more new discoveries, to be a part of more new laser facilities that are pushing those boundaries of what we can do in facilities like this. Thank you.